Now, you, you referred in that evidence uh, in response to Senator Hanson that there is the capacity for a party to put in an amended return if they have failed to meet their obligations. And had to be fair, Senator Sue, you're absolutely correct. And we accept amended returns, and we've done so from all parties on the Sure. Basis. Has Senator Hanson or her party lodged an amended return in relation to the apparent gift of a plane? Uh, again, Senator, I made the statement I made at the start, and I won't comment further on that matter. This is separate to the investigation. Surely, I mean, if I asked you whether Labor had lodged an amended return or the Liberal Party or the LNP, you could tell me that. Uh, if you're disclosing you've got a plane, Senator, I'm... <laughs> I don't. I wish I did. Uh, but no, I, they're all part of the same issue, Senator. I'm very, very cautious here. I've, I've already given a pretty comprehensive statement of where we are. Right. And I really would like to leave it at that rather than delve any further into it. OK. I think the question I was asking you when Senator Hanson was um, allocated some time uh, related to uh, conversations you'd had with the Minister. And again, there was a, an article in The Australian on the 2nd of May. I'm, I'm re-asking this because I don't think we did get an answer to this. Um, the article on the 2nd of May in The Australian reported that Minister Ryan had spoken to you um, about uh, Senator Hanson's claim that the plan came from a property developer but was not a donation. What was the nature of that conversation with Minister Ryan? And again, I've made the statement that I made at the start, Senator, and I'm loath to go any further into this matter. Senator Ryan, can you elaborate? Well, I think it would be inappropriate for me to contradict um, the Electoral Commissioner. I mean, I, I've said, I think this came up in the chamber, that we don't want political parties investigating other political parties. I'm, a, I'm also on the... No, yeah. we've and got so, an independent authority to um, do that. And, yeah. and I'm very, very keen to protect that independence. So. Um, I was very careful in the words I chose in that in that article or in that query, uh, but I don't want to go into any further given what the Commissioner has said, uh, what he's put on the record and has indicated he'd prefer not to go any further. Have you, have you or anyone within the government ever requested the AEC to investigate the matters concerning the plane? Well, I can't answer on behalf of anyone across the government, including, assuming you mean the executive and the backbench. Um, I don't believe I have. And you're not aware of anyone else within government having referred the matter for investigation? Well, hang on, there's a, there's a difference. You just asked the first question. Yeah, you I'm, asked. I'm putting it a different way yeah. because I understand you can't know everything. Are you aware of anyone within the government having referred this matter for investigation? Um, could, could I make a, again, I'm <coughs> trying to make no statement about you know, the issue, could I make a generic statement? I've now um, had the privilege of working with special ministers of state from both sides of the house, and uh, not once from any one of those special ministers of state have we been asked to do anything um, that would in any way be either inappropriate... I'm not or, suggesting it would be. ..or, or breach yeah. you know, sort of political neutrality, in even the slightest hint of that at all, at any time from any special minister of state. So that, that might be part of that answer for you, Senator. I'm certainly not implying that the minister has leaned on you yeah. to make any decision. Mm. All I'm asking is whether um, the minister or anyone else within the government mm. has referred the matter for investigation in a similar way to I, uh, the way I have. And again, I come back to my statement that the delegate of the commission has issued notices and that's where we are at the moment. OK. Um, Leaving aside the government, has anyone other than me referred this matter to the Electoral Commission for investigation? Um, I, I know this is making me sound <laughs> very dull, uh, Senator, but the delegate dull of the Commission... Okay. Commissioner. Oh, sorry, Senator. Dull is OK. Dull is OK. Senator. Some people live by it. <laughs> so the delegate of the Commission has issued Section 316, three notices. OK. How many, how many Electoral Commission staff are working on this investigation? The delegate has issued section 3163 notices and I'm loath to talk any further about <laughs> the process. You can't tell us how many people are working on it? But you can put your questions on notice. Well, I don't think I'll get an answer. There we go. Um, well, I, I, I genuinely thought that one would be okay to ask. Um, it's, a, it's a resourcing issue after all, and that's what, isn't that what Essence is about? Except in this case, Senator. <laughs> um, would you expect that once this investigation is concluded that you will issue a public report? Mm. I will take that on notice, Senator, and I'll see which way that ends up. 
What is the ordinary course taken in these types of investigations? Well, as I said previously, Senator, if, um, if at the end of a process a party amended a disclosure return, that would be published on our website. Um, so uh, there are a number of possible outcomes from this particular event, and I think I need to wait and see which way that plays out. Hmm. Am I right, by the way, I've been asked this question myself, am I right that if, for argument's sake, One Nation is found to have breached electoral law in relation to the plane, the penalties for that are essentially fines? They don't involve jail terms, do they? Uh, Senator, that's not necessarily the case. Um, again, Mr Prani has our copy of the Act up there into the table, but I think section 3165... Uh, Sorry, uh, generally under section 315, you are correct, Senator, they are only penalties. However... Um, if we are given incorrect information as a result of the 3163 notice, I quoted 3166 to you earlier on, and that includes a term of imprisonment. So and just some, to, sorry, oh, just to yep. clarify, that's a strict liability offence, as I read it, Mr Pirani, um, those offences. Uh, not the 3166 offence. The 3165 offence right. is a strict liability offence. That's 3165 capital B. Mm -hmm. But 3166 is not a strict liability offence. Thank you. But, but the, the point is that these notices that you've issued asking people to either produce documents or to appear and give evidence, if someone doesn't comply with that, they can be punished with a term of imprisonment? No, no, sir. No. OK. If, if um, I think the penalty for failing to produce a notice, in a, in, uh, produce the information in accordance with section 3163, I think that is a fine of about $1,100 from memory, Mr Perone. Um. I thought there was something that Mr Perone said um, could result in a term of imprisonment. Uh, that's, that's only if we're given false, false or misleading information in okay. response yeah. to that. Okay. That's a, a specific one here. There is also the reciprocal offences in section uh, 136 and 137 of the Criminal Code Act 1995, which have 12 month imprisonment. If someone gives you false information false and misleading in response to one of these notices? That's correct. Well, okay. Yes, Senator, in, in response to a notice. I know it is generally, yeah. Generally, I, I want to be very clear yep. that what Understand. Mr Prani just said and what I said... Applies to any, any time... Correct, not specifically to the issue that you were talking about previously. Any, any of those rare occasions, once in every five years, that you have to issue one of these notices. Um, the... So... And I think you've taken on notice whether um, you will publish a report at the end of this investigation. Do you intend at any point to publish an interim or a preliminary report? No, that would, that would not occur. Okay, so it'll, it'll, it may or may not be at the end of the investigation. Okay. Um, has, at this point in the investigation, has any information held by the Electoral Commission been requested by or provided to the Federal Police? I rely on the statement I made at the start, Senator, that the Delegate of the Commission has issued those notices. Okay. So I think I think my remaining questions relate to the plan, but not to the investigation, so hopefully this will be safe territory. Senator, um, I, I can tell you it probably won't be, because <laughs> it's broadly in the field that we're actually looking at, and I'm okay. very conscious... Let's, let's, have it, let's see how we go. Um, Senator Hanson... I don't have the date for this, but there, Senator Hanson uh, has stated on Sky News um, that she has, at an earlier time, been advised by the Electoral Commission that there was and I quote, no issue with the plain donation. Is that correct? Again, that is absolutely part of 3163. Uh, no comment on that, Senator. It's all part of the same process. OK, so that, that claim from Senator Hanson is part of the investigation? No, no, as in it, it goes to the investigation, as in it's talking about the plane, it's talking about uh, a, a range of issues associated with that, and I'm loath to talk any further about it. OK. Um, I think I know what your answer will be, but I might request on notice a copy of that advice, if indeed it was provided, the advice from the Electoral Commission that there was no issue with the plain donation. Um, Senator, I'm happy to take that on notice. But 
tell you it's unlikely I'm able to provide anything to you on that, but anyway, sure. I'll take that on notice. And just, just to conclude in terms of the plan, because you know, I think there's a lot of confusion out there. There's been all sorts of different stories floating around about where the plan came from, who it was given to, what it's been used for, et cetera, et cetera. Am I right that, let's, let's take the plan out of it. If, if it's a truck, a particular candidate in a particular party it involved a truck or some other item. Or a bus. Bus. Or a bus. <laughs> a bus. Um, red bus. A big blue bus. <laughs> a big blue bus, for instance. Um, if... Does the bus break down? If a... Is Sam in the bus? Um, if a person <laughs> donates money to a political party which is then used to buy some item of equipment that is used for political purposes, that would constitute a gift and would need to be disclosed? Right, so uh, let me completely park the issue that we were talking about sure. previously. Sure, sure. Um, you're asking a general question about the applicability of the Electoral Act in a particular set of circumstances. Um, generally speaking, that would be categorised as a gift that would need to be declared. Um, Provided it was above the disclosure the threshold. threshold. Yeah. yeah, so let's say it's $50,000. What, uh, what's the threshold? 10000 at the moment? Yes. No, at so the moment. Let's say uh, 13000 30. Well, let's say it's $50,000. Um, uh, if someone gives a gift of cash to a political party, really, however it's used, it has above, to be above declared. The threshold. Above the threshold, it has to be declared. If someone gives a gift in kinds, gives a piece of equipment to a political party above the threshold, it has to be declared. Certain categories are excluded, but yeah, generally speaking. Yeah, yes. yeah. I remember very clearly that I think it's something like the use of commercial aircraft um, is included as a gift in kind, but with certain exclusions, a gift in kind must be declared as well. If someone donates money or gifts money to a private individual, who's connected to a political party and that money is used to fund something to do with the political activities of that party, <coughs> does that need to be disclosed? Senator, I think I need a whiteboard at this stage to... Yeah. Uh, is, that a, is that a hypothetical? Well, no, I don't, I'm asking for an interpretation of the law. I think I really need to look at the detail of that um, and I'm loath to... We're now moving beyond just the straight do gifts need to be declared. We're now talking about the applicability in a particular situation and I'd really need to look at that in a little bit of detail. So, Senator, another provision, I mean, you've looked at the definition of gift in section 287, which is about the disposition of property and not adequate consideration. The other provision you need to have a look at is section 304, subsection 5, which deals with the intention of the person making the gift, uh, which says out, in the case of a gift made to a candidate, including a member of a, of a group, the gift was made in a private capacity to the candidate for his or her personal use, and the candidate has not used and will not use the gift solely or substantially for the purposes related to an election or a by-election. Now, this relates to the donor's obligations as well as the candidate's obligations in relation to doing a disclosure return to us. So quite often these things can depend upon what the intention of the donor was and also how the candidate has, has used it in relation to the conduct of an election. Sure. So there are a whole lot of variables. That's the that key, isn't it, in that it's, if it was made, if it was um, uh, used for, personal, for a personal use. So if someone made a, do made a gift um, which was used to buy a truck, a bus, a boat, whatever, which is used in a personal capacity to drive around town, to go away on weekends, then that most likely would not need to be disclosed. And indeed, if you used your own car to drive a... a um, uh, if someone used their own car to drive you around to do campaigning, that probably wouldn't be a gift mm. that would require to be disclosed. But if it's not used for personal use, if it's used for election campaigning, political purposes, then all things being equal, it would need to be disclosed. And then you've got to look at how much of it was being used for that purpose to try and work out what uh, value is going to be. Because when you look at the definition of gift, it refers to without consideration or adequate consideration. So you then have to look at issues about, OK, what is the value of the particular use that's been made? 
Thank you, Mr. Prani. Thank you, Senator Watt. I think, that given it's now 10 p.m. on that note, let's take the um, delayed break for 15 minutes. We'll return at 10 p.m.